All right, guys, what's going on? Jacob here, Miami Dolphins Syndicate. Guess who thought the preseason game was on Saturday instead of it being tonight? Guess who was recording this just before 1 o'clock and hoping to get it up before 2 o'clock because he has to go somewhere? Me. Yeah, I thought the game was on Saturday. I literally just found out by being on the phone with Donovan. Uh, his video should be out literally at the time of recording this, talking about Malik Washington. Malik Washington is a player we're going to talk about in this preview, but on the phone there is when I found out the game is, in fact, tonight. Uh, so, yeah, final preseason game, Miami Dolphins going up to Tampa, take on the Buccaneers. A game that I don't think you're going to see a lot of starters playing if you're the Miami Dolphins. For the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, even more of a mystery. Baker Mayfield has not played at all during the preseason, and I tried to find some information about Baker Mayfield as to whether he'll play tonight or not, and I did not find anything online. But you look at the Miami Dolphins, you look at what Mike McDaniel has done in preseason, his first two seasons, and now here in his third, and he has played two of at least one series in each of the second and third games in the preseason, but I am reluctant to think that Tua is going to go out there today. Multitude of reasons. First and most importantly is just to keep Tua healthy. Tua has had an extensive injury history and last year he did really well staying healthy and that was the healthiest season Tua has had since his early days at Alabama. So you don't want to risk him just based off his own injury issues but also looking at the injury issues from around the team. Injuries have continued to stack up. Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Odell Beckham, Jordan Poyer. The list goes on on talented, important, should be starters for this Miami Dolphins team that have already gotten hurt hurt in preseason so you don't want to take a risk with your number one guy who has his own injury issues especially when the team in general has had massive injury issues but i expected this to be a very much a similar affair to what we saw in the first preseason game for the miami dolphins where it is the skylar white Skyler White, I did it again. Skyler Thompson, a Mike White show for the Miami Dolphins. It looks like that Skyler Thompson is going to be the QB2 for this team. It looks like he's won the backup job, but tonight is the last chance to do so. Uh, last chance to take the job back if you're Mike White. We've seen Skyler get the start or get the first off the bench role for the Miami Dolphins so far in every game in preseason and he's looked all right he's continued to look athletic he looks like he still you know wants to make plays outside the pocket and looks even more comfortable inside the pocket which not saying much because Skylar Thompson through his first few years of the Miami Dolphins has absolutely never wanted to stay inside the pocket but looks like he's starting to adapt to what the offense is asking of him what Mike McDaniel is asking of him and while I still think our backup quarter si quarterback situation is terrible I, it is what it is. You have what you have, and Scott Thompson looks to be the best of the two. Mike White had the backup job last year, and when he came in, didn't do anything to impress whatsoever. Looked rather poor, in fact, and came in in blowout opportunities where he wasn't needed to do anything besides just not give the game away. Almost did one time giving up a pick six, but obviously that didn't end up uh, coming back to bite the Dolphins, but he just does not inspire. He does not add anything to the offense. We're Scott Thompson, his athleticism, it's fun to see, it's fun to watch. Sometimes it's, it's very unrefined, but I expect him to be the QB2 going into the season. I expect him to get the majority of the snaps as the starter today, and then Mike White will probably take the entire second half. So we the last opportunity for fringe guys that were looking to make the roster to give good impressions. I'm looking at that secondary group where there is a bunch of guys trying to fit into a very few amount of spots, most notably Nick Needham, who was everybody's dar darling a few years ago before Cater Kahu really took that mountain from him and has really taken that slot corner spot away uh, from Nick Needham. Nick Needham obviously dealt with injuries all of last season, barely saw the field, and now this season is at the moment looking at one of the odd men out looking to try to make his way back into the team. He needs to have himself a good game in his snap counts, how often he's on the field, the package he's playing with will tell you a lot about where Nick Needham is in the pecking order and whether he'll make this team or not. But then there's guys like Siren Neal, Storm Duck, Isaiah Johnson, who are also on the fringes at the defensive back position that could look to make this team. It's going to be a very competitive uh, position for the Miami Dolphins to try to get those next guys in line. You know the starters are going to be across the board. Uh, Jalen Ramsey on the other side. You have uh, Kendall Fuller, and then on the inside, you have Cater Who. Those are going to be the starting three corners for the Miami Dolphins. But those next guys in line, it's going to be uh, a lot to what we see here tonight will really give us a good indication as who has won those next spots in the defensive back group. I think the most intriguing watch of the night is going to be getting to look at Eric Azucama and Malik Washington one more time. Both guys who are potential cut candidates. Donovan earlier today called Malik Washington a bust, which personally... 
hey, I'm with most of you guys who probably watched that video. I think it's a bit egregious to call Malik Washington a bust, especially as a sixth round pick. And I told him that multiple times, but you know, he was projected to be an earlier pick. So whatever. I don't think he is going to be I don't think you can label him a bust, but again, is what it is. But watching the two of them going out there tonight, the last chance for both of them potentially to grab that last wide receiver spot on the team. There's a lot of injuries currently going on with the Miami Dolphins, as previously mentioned. So these two might make the team just on the merit of they are healthy. It's not necessarily ideal for either of them. Eric Azukama, you know, has dealt with his injury issues, only has, you know, a handful of yards in his career. Malik Washington is not impressed at all as a wide receiver he's looked decent as a returner but both of them with their their shortcomings one way or another both might make this team because of the injury crisis Miami Dolphins are currently facing or it might be one of the two or it might be neither of the two so this is going to be the most exciting position to watch you're going to see the most electricity because Malik Washington at any point could return a kickoff for a touchdown and really shoehorn himself into that number one returner role or Eric Azucamo, while I don't really care about preseason performance per se, if he does have a very similar game to where what he did last week, five catches for 60 yards, I believe, if he put, if he shows out a very similar performance, then he very well could earn him spot on the roster. And then there's guys like Tanner Connor who was out of the game last week due to injury, but could potentially make the team as a fourth tight end just because of the issues with the wide receiver room being hurt. Obviously, you have Jonu Smith, Derm Smith, and Julian Hill who are going to make the team as the top three tight ends, but I could see the team bringing in a fourth tight end with Tanner Connor. So another name to watch tonight, see how he performs, see how long he's on the field, see who he's on the field with to determine, again, like I've mentioned with all these guys, whether he'll make the team or not. And then as for the Buccaneers, your guess is as good as mine as who's going to be out there. Baker Mayfield has not played at all so far this preseason. I don't expect to see Baker. I don't expect to see Rashad White. I don't expect to see Rash uh, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Maybe you'll see a little bit of Cade Otten, but all their, their top guys on offense, I don't expect to see any of them. So it's going to probably be Kyle Trask uh, getting the start for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Florida un former University of Florida quarterback. And me as a Gators fan, as I say, wearing it, FAU t-shirt. I was not a big fan of Kyle Trask at Florida and he has not done anything to impress so far at the NFL level. So he is competing for a backup job for the Buccaneers and that's looking what looking like what his career will ultimately be is just a career backup and he gets to potentially earn and solidify himself as the number two quarterback up in Tampa tonight but otherwise you look across that Tampa Bay roster hardly any starters are probably going to be out there. I highly doubt this is going to be a game that Miami Dolphins fans remember for a long time. Just guys at the fringes of the roster getting their last opportunities to impress Mike McDaniel and the rest of this coaching staff. If Tua goes out there, I highly, highly doubt we see him for anything more than one, at most, two series. Maybe if he's a starter, that first drive, if you go three and out, maybe pick up one first down and the punt team comes out there. Maybe see him come out for a second drive, but I don't even expect to see him as well as the rest of the starters in the game whatsoever. So probably going to be rather under un underwhelming uh, affair, probably low scoring, uh, and guys that are going to be out there playing. It's going to be scrappy. It's going to be a bit intense, especially when you get in the third and fourth quarter with guys that are fighting for their NFL careers. You might see a bit of intensity, you might see some some late hits, some personal fouls, some guys that are playing on emotion rather than playing you know, at their smartest, but they're just trying to fight for their lives to stay on the roster to continue to pursue their NFL dream. Um, but other than that, there's nothing to write home about with this game. It's probably going to be a very low scoring affair, probably very similar to what we saw last week with 13-6. to Last opportunity to see the Dolphins before we get uh, kicked off with the regular season on the 9th against the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm excited to watch. Again, I literally had no idea it was today. I, I went into today thinking, okay, I'm going to make the, the preview. I'm going to make it, you know, around probably 2 or 3 o'clock. I'm going to go make some money and then come back here and, and make the video, have it up by 5 o'clock on the phone with Donovan. He's like, yeah, you want to come over and watch a game? I'm like, today? Like, what game's today? He's in he's the Dolphins game. I'm like, oh, crap. So, hi, here we are. Let us know how you think the game is going to go down below. What are you excited to see? Who are you excited to see? Let us know down below in the comments while down there. Hit that like button. Hit that sub button. We appreciate you all very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Go Dolphins.